listeners i am your host jayashri and you're listening to ta radio powered by tachalai foundation welcome to leadership for life with kira kevano president of 15b wellbeing a company dedicated towards creating learning experiences for leading corporations workplaces teams groups and individuals cuz they believe that no one should sacrifice wellbeing for performance in today's interview we are going to talk about managing your energy okay so when you say managing your energy that means how are you channelizing your inner force inner energy towards the tasks that you're doing and towards the thoughts that you have in your mind because it's a combination of both and we are going to talk more about that in detail why is it important for you to manage and channelize your energy in an appropriate direction and do you really have any strategies and techniques that you can use to cultivate this beautiful habit so that you get benefited in a very long run and a lot more without any further delay let's welcome kira on to our show today again hello kira welcome back on tal radio Thank you so much Tishri. Hello. Hello everyone. I'm so happy to be with you today. This is exciting. This might be actually I'm going to tell you a little secret. My favorite topic of all the ones we've talked about. Wow. So I think we're going to get some more special perks today. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So my very first question to you Kira. Um now that I want you to briefly explain what uh, you actually mean by managing your energy first and then I'll get into the actual questions so please uh, explain to us what do you think on um the uh, no what do you think managing your energy means sounds good so we'll jump in so quantum physicists have proven what many traditions have known uh for centuries which is that we are made of energy and in fact everything around us is energy so we may think that we're solid beings we may think our television or our automobile or our bicycle is um solid and it's not physicists have proven to us that everything is energy if that's the case then oh my goodness we've got this incredible opportunity to have the energy that is us to to be managing it as the precious resource it is so i can share from my own perspective as a young person when i had lots and lots and lots of energy i didn't pay too much attention to how to manage it because it was abundant it was there all the time but as we go through life as we encounter challenges and amazing moments we start to recognize wow we can actually you can actually think about your energy learn to monitor your energy this is what we're going to be talking about and exploring today and use it as a resource that helps you live your most aligned happiest most fulfilled life wow it makes more beautiful sense to hear it in your words thank you for answering that now my very first um question to you i think this is something that um a lot of us really uh, struggle with is it how do you prioritize tasks to ensure you're managing your energy efficiently throughout the day so the first thing is to pay attention to your energy cycle the pattern of energy that is you so when do you feel most productive do your moods change throughout the day are you enthusiastic more enthusiastic to do certain things or to think through certain things at certain times of day each one of us is very different our energy can flow in different ways depending on the seasons depending on the time of day So step 1 is to monitor to observe and become aware of how your energy shifts and changes throughout the day and then to manage our energy most efficiently to then plan to do certain tasks to work through challenging situations when you have the most energy to let yourself rest when your energy is low 
and to respect that there is absolutely nothing wrong with you maybe being a night person when I'm more of a morning person. There's nothing wrong with being a night owl and wanting to um, do your best work or write poetry or create music in the middle of the night if that's when you feel most inspired. And then we recognize how to ride those energy waves, how to take full advantage of honoring that. What happens instead is for me, I'll hit an energy lull at 2.30 in the afternoon. And when my body really might need a nap because my energy is so low, I might have a cup of coffee instead. Do you see how then I'm not honoring that natural energetic cycle? I'm, I'm using caffeine then to try to push through that energetic lull which is to say I value the pushing through of the energy more than honoring its natural cycle. So step one is to observe. Step two is to honor your energetic cycle and not judge it and try to push through it in ways that um, don't honor it. And then step three is really to be um, to predict that energetic cycle and to organize your activities throughout the day to honor that. Another example might be, I focus best in the first half of my day. After lunch, I feel my energy, my ability to focus and concentrate just isn't as strong. So if I want to get something done, it's best for me to schedule it in the morning. If I need to be doing really focused work, best for me to be doing it in the morning. I'm much more relaxed in the afternoon, so it makes more sense for me to be more collaborative, to schedule meetings, to do things that maybe call in some of that more calm energy and use that to my advantage in the afternoon. So hopefully some of those examples can help. They sure do. And having understood the example that you gave about the energy lull uh, in a in certain part of the day, how do you identify specifically and uh, mitigate these energy drains um, in your professional and personal life both? Because at times you are challenged to, um, you know, keep yourself up, just as you said, you push it through a cup of coffee. And um, yeah, maybe in, in that aspect, how do you identify and mitigate these energy drains? So ideally, we're waking up with the sun, we're going to bed with the darkness, with the moon coming up. Before there was industrialization, we humans lived much more in those energetic patterns. So of course, realistically, there are times we're going to have to push through. There are times that we're going to uh, recognize that our bodies would be best making a different choice. So it's not to say that we can always or uh, have to live and work in, the, in those patterns. What it is to say is to recognize when you're deviating from it and to honor that choice mindfully. So in other words, to recognize, well, if I have differences in my energy, I know my energetic pattern, I wonder if the people in my life, the people I'm leading, uh, are aware of their energetic patterns. And perhaps we can start to build that awareness. You know this when you're raising littles like you are, um, you know when your child, <laughs> you better get home because you know when they're going to start to fall apart and need a nap, right? So it doesn't mean every single time you're out with your child that you're automatically going to make sure you're going to be home. Some parents do adjust their lifestyles that way, and that's fine. But we can see it in other people. Do those folks understand it in themselves? And then how do we, in our communal units, in our families, in our work, in our communities, with our friends, talk about and honor those choices? And then when we recognize we're deviating from that energy cycle, that energetic wave that um, is ideal for us, do we have to do it all the time? Can we be more uh, sort of 
back and forth. Today I had to have my cup of coffee, but tomorrow my meeting schedule isn't as intense or I'm gonna have a little bit of alone time. Maybe on that day I do go ahead and just take a rest for a few minutes. So it's really honoring, recognizing, being realistic, not judging, and then doing the best we can to honor those cycles when we can, but also be understanding when we can't. It's about that observation and awareness and then making choices accordingly. That's most important. Got that. And uh, when you said about the situations where your physical body is needing rest or it's kind of exhausting and pushing you pushing that through uh, the situation is pretty much same with your mind and your soul where the energy gets depleted there as well pretty quickly uh, mm -hmm. when compared to the physical body most of the times so how do you balance your physical mental and emotional energy to stay effective as a leader specifically because um, a leader definitely has a lot on his plate. So in that context. Yeah. So we think about if quantum physics has proven to us and ancient masters have known that um, that physically we're made of energy and that we're not solid, we can apply that then to our thoughts and our feelings. So thoughts are just thoughts. They're energy waves that come in and go and our feelings are just feelings they come and they go and in certain traditions spiritual and religious traditions um you know some of the great leaders have helped us understand that transitive nature of our existence and so when we think of our emotional life and our rational thinking life as you're suggesting here jayshree then we can start to recognize Ooh, there's an emotional wave for me, right? I'll see one of my children and oh, I can feel the energy shift. Here comes the smile and I can't wait to give them a hug. Or I may see someone in my family that I'm in a conflict with and whoop, here comes the emotion. I can feel myself constricting and contracting. So just like we can be honoring and recognizing the energetic patterns that impact our physical well-being, we can do the same with our emotional and our rational mental well-being. And the way we do that is to observe the situations, people, events, times of year, times of day, where we feel maybe more positive or times we feel more negative. Um, the times that we have lots and lots of thoughts, lots of ideas, and times that we don't. And so when we start to watch those patterns, then we can start to recognize the optimum time to have that difficult conversation. It may, you may not want to have it when you're really sleepy or when you're really tired or when you've had a really long day or you're feeling really depleted. So we've talked about many times when we pause, when we understand, when we observe, we have choice and choice is everything. So I'll give you a, a real life example. I went to bed last night and I was exhausted and I got a little annoyed with my husband about something and ooh, did I want to say something? And ooh, have I learned after 24 years of marriage, you don't need to bring that up right now, Kira. And I, there was like, you know, two sides of me and I'm like, I want to say something. And then I'm like, no. And I woke up this morning and I was so glad I did because with a good night's sleep, with a nice breakfast, I could keep perspective on something that I didn't have last night. So hopefully that gives you an example of how knowing the energetic patterns of your emotions, your thoughts, uh, and the physical needs of your body, then you can start to have choice. And then we can manage our energy for a happy life, for happy relationships, for fulfillment at work, and more. Wonderful. Beautifully said. And um, how do you stay consistent um, <laughs> with your energy manage and management routine amidst the never-ending demands of leadership? Yeah. 
So the more we observe, the more we experiment. So going back to my example, I woke up this morning and there was positive reinforcement for the fact that I didn't bring up something that I didn't need to bring up when I was super tired. So I just got positive reinforcement for that. That starts to build habits, that starts to build uh, learning and skill around how to consistently manage the energetic shifts in our thoughts, feelings, and the physical needs of our body. The more we observe, the more we practice, the more we start to build those connections. Those connections turn into habits, those habits turn into mindsets, ways of life, and fulfillment in our relationships, in our work, in our lifestyle choices, etc. So it's, it's the way we learn anything, which is through trial and error. We just don't always think of experimentation in terms of our own energy. We often think of energetic experiments like atomic bombs and, you know, gra experiments with gravity and other kinds of really um, tangible scientific energy, nuclear energy kinds of experiments, we don't always think of it in terms of our own energy. And that's why this is one of the most exciting topics to me, because it gives you so much power and so much agency that it really opens up all kinds of possibilities when we see that potential for energetic management within ourselves and our own lives. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that example again and for a clearer understanding for all of us. And I could see you were laughing as I was asking the question because I know I know this is something that all of us like I know I think I definitely struggle with it. So yeah. it was inevitable for me to ask you that particular <laughs> question. So yes. Uh okay. Uh having understood that, um when you say uh, about energy and you know um, the amount of focus that you need to keep it in place mindfulness definitely plays a lot uh, a crucial role here so how do you think that uh, mindfulness complements uh, managing your energy or uh, for that matter even meditation play a role in your energy management strategy yeah Oof, love that question. I get chills. <laughs> so if we think about, I'm going to encourage you to think about your energy centers in your body. So the energy center of your head, your mind, your mental health, the energy center of your um, heart, your emotion, your emotional health. And then you can think of an energy center that sits in the belly that represents your vitality and your physical well being. So, if we think about those three energetic centers, you can ask yourself which one do you lead with most? Some of us, we lead with our hearts, we lead with our emotion. We are very in tune with our emotion, and you make choices from your emotion, and people feel the emotion that's in you as sort of the leading energy when they encounter you. Jayshree, you and I were just talking about this before we started our interview. Yeah. So some of us, some of you listening, may really identify with being in a physical body. The most obvious example of that may be an athlete or a singer or a dancer who really just feels the energy in their body and expresses it easily and effortlessly, knows how to move and manipulate the energy in their body to build muscles, to sing a clear note, to play an instrument, et cetera, et cetera. Then there are those of us, me included, that lead with our minds. Oh, we love our minds. Our minds are so smart and they keep us safe and they strategize and analyze and judge. And you know people, yourself maybe as well, who lead with their brains. That's their brand. They just, you just know, they're just brain people, right? So the opportunity with mindfulness is to keep the brain in check. Ideally, well-being comes from a nice balance of mental, emotional, and physical well-being. 
but our brains, super smart brains, can decide that they should be the ones leading. Or if you're just so comfortable in your body, that may be your go-to intelligence, right? So what mindfulness does is it just helps us pay attention and to synchronize, synchronize the mind with the heart and with our physical beings. And so what it does is it gives us the opportunity to, when I say sync, to move and to have your mind connected in that movement. So it's not like you're cooking dinner and you're talking to somebody and you're listening to music and, and there's so much going on. No, this is about mindfulness is about oh, smell the food, hear it cooking, salivate and imagine eating the food. The mind is now connected in to the act of cooking. One way you can do it is to pay attention to the senses that gets you into your body. You can visualize what's happening next. You can visualize yourself as energy that trains the mind. And you can also ask when your mind answers first, oh, I think we need some cumin in this recipe. Stop and feel into it. Smell the smells. Do we need the cumin based on the smell? <gasps> How does your heart feel about this incredible spice? Does your heart want this spice in your meal today or not? So that might sound kind of like a funny example, but mindfulness is about keeping the mind balanced in full harmony with the heart and with your body so that you're making a holistic choice about what you need. So hopefully that, that kind of helps. It might sound funny to, if you're used to recipes and deciding with your mind in the recipe whether cumin goes in the dish, it might sound kind of funny to try thinking about it from those other lenses or those other forms of intelligence. I personally feel that's pretty creative to, th to think that way because you can create your own recipes that way with your, with your thoughts, with your heart. And definitely, as you said, if you are trying to be mindful about each and every ingredient that's going in and then trying to contemplate which complements what and how does that go, you can be very creative with that rather than just following the bookish recipe. So I think I love that idea. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. And um, my next question to you, um, and I love this question in all of our interviews because you give us beautiful exercises to work with when I ask you for a strategy. So <laughs> I am coming back with another question about it. <laughs> so what strategies or practices do you think um, and also personally implement uh, to maintain high energy levels um, in critical moments, um, or maybe, you know, just like that, not, yeah. not essentially in any critical moment, but, you know, just like that on, in any given situation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to encourage you to imagine a dancer and imagine no matter what dancing tradition comes to mind, Imagine that dancer moving. That dancer knows how to move, to move with the beat, to move in the space around them, to use their clothing or maybe bells, things that they're wearing, their shoes, to be able to move with their body and make sounds in space. So imagine how it feels to dance in that way or to watch a dancer move. What does it feel like as you imagine that? So the strategy that I use, the strategy I invite you to use is to imagine that same efficiency of movement, choice in the movement, the effortlessness that a dancer conveys 
when they move their body to use that as a form, an expression of life. When we move with our mind intentionally connected to the body, to our intentions, our desires, our wishes, our joy, then we're moving as one, heart, mind, and body, effortlessly with the least amount of energy being expended. And all of our senses, our choices, our movements are one. And when we live that way, there's much less conflict. There's much less energy depletion. There's much more creativity, innovation, and flow. So I invite you to think about to feel into, to sense the places, the times of day, the situations and events in your life where it feels like you can't dance through it. It feels like the energy's blocked, it's stuck. And imagine being able to move the energy in that relationship effortlessly to be able to convey your words, your ideas, your advice in a way that doesn't create conflict, to remain calm, to remain efficient in your words, in your action, to be open-hearted and joyful, to provide yourself and others benefit of the doubt, to move into, not just think about and visualize, but to feel into every aspect of life, wanting, desiring for flow to be your ultimate goal. And to breathe into, to live into the spaces that feel constricted and imagine light and sound and movement and energy simply moving it through, through your life, through your work, through your relationships, just like clouds move effortlessly through the sky. Nothing is permanent. And when we fully embrace that energy is always flowing and always moving, then we have so much possibility for peace, for happiness, for equanimity, for joy, for all of those states that we desire to live and move and breathe into in every second of our day. And it's absolutely possible when we're willing, when you're willing to tune in and create space for the heart, for the body and the mind and to observe just like uh, so many observe nature the waves just come and they go the spider just spins its web the birds just find food so i encourage you as we wrap up today to think about how can you live in that way of constant flowing energy and observing and letting go in every moment just like a wave comes in and then it recedes, we can live in the same way. Wonderful. That was extremely refreshing, energizing, as I must say. And it was truly, truly um, a surreal experience to, um, to learn this kind of techniques from you and implement them in our day-to-day -day lives um, for for a better meaningful life that we lead. I'm really glad we're having these conversations, Kira. Thank you so much for giving us such beautiful exercise today and to follow later on as well. And thank you specifically for your wonderful time again today for us. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. I just wanna convey there's always hope. There's always hope 
we always have the opportunity to just relax a little bit more to trust ourselves in the world around us that we're safe and that we're okay and when we do that we calm the nervous system and possibilities open up to us so i offer that up to every one of you listening today with love thank you so much thank you so much so all our listeners out there i hope you have practiced this exercise along with us today and i'm pretty sure this will help you to re-energize yourselves and bring your mind back to focus and also channelize your energies in a positive direction thank you so much for listening to us today as well so that was kira kevinov for all of you today and you're listening to tal radio powered by tachalai foundation this is your host jayashree signing off for today stay tuned and keep learning